Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss chemical bonding. Let us now move forward to Lewis dot structures. Scientists named Gilbert and Lewis suggested the Lewis dot structure. It helps us to visualize the chemical bonding and chemical reactions. Let us look at the Lewis dot structures for few elements. The symbol of an element represents the nucleus and all inner shell electrons. Dots represent valence electrons. And we have just read valence electrons are the number of electrons in the outermost shell. Lewis suggested atom bond together so that each atom acquires an electronic configuration the same as that of noble gas nearest to it in the atomic number. So can you tell me how many atoms would hydrogen like to acquire? It has one electron. And the nearest noble gas to it is helium, which has two electrons. So hydrogen would acquire one electron. Now, how about nitrogen? Nitrogen has five electrons. And the noble gas nearest to it is neon, which has eight electrons in its outermost shell. So nitrogen will have a tendency to acquire three more electrons. So an atom that gains electron becomes an anion that is the negatively charged ion. An atom that loses electrons becomes a cation that is a positively charged ion. The attraction of anions and cations leads to the formation of ionic solids. So this explains the ionic bonding. We also have another kind of bond which is called covalent bond wherein an atom may share electrons with one or more atoms to complete its valence shell. And when this sharing does not happen equally, we get polar covalent bonds. So now you must be wondering what gives rise to the formation of ionic or covalent bonds. Well, this concept is called electronegativity. It is a measure of an atom's attraction for the electrons it shares with another atom in a chemical bond. And it is measured on Pauling scale. And it generally increases from left to right in a row of a periodic table and from bottom to top in a column of a periodic table. Let us try to understand this concept taking sodium and fluorine as an example. As a rough guideline, ions will form if the difference in electronegativity between interacting atoms is 1.9 or greater. For example, sodium has electronegativity of 0.9 and fluorine has electronegativity of 4 and both these are on Pauling scale. So we can clearly see this will form an ionic bond as 4 minus 0.9 is 3.1 which is greater than 1.9. Let us try to show this reaction using Lewis dot structure. We'll use a single headed barbed curved arrow to show the transfer of one electron from sodium to fluorine. So sodium will lose an electron and will become sodium cation and fluorine will gain an electron and will become fluorine anion. Now please remember in doing so sodium as well as fluorine have acquired their nearest noble gas configuration. Now let us try to understand the covalent bonds. Please pay extra attention here because we will use this extensively in our organic chemistry. The simplest covalent bond is that of hydrogen molecule. The single electrons from each atom combine to form an electron pair. The shared pair functions in two ways simultaneously. It is shared by two atoms and fills the valence shell of each atom. Now, if you look at these hydrogen atoms separately, each of these has acquired an extra electron that it needed to achieve the nearest noble gas configuration of helium. Please remember, if we have one shared pair of electron, it forms a single bond. If we will have two shared pairs, it will form double bond. And if we have three shared pair, we will get a triple bond. This will be very useful in understanding the organic chemistry. So a quick recap of ionic and covalent bonds. Ionic bonds are formed via electrostatic attraction. They are generally formed between metal and non-metal. Metal becomes the cation and the non-metal will become the anions. And what is its major cause? Is the electronegativity difference of greater than 1.9. Covalent bonds are formed by sharing of electrons between the atoms having similar electronegativity. It is generally seen in non-metals. 
and now we will conclude by briefly touching the concept of polarity which is very important to understand all the properties of water we know water is a universal solvent but do you know what makes it universal solvent it is the polarity so water is h2o so two hydrogen atom joined to a oxygen atom now oxygen being a larger and more powerful atom pulls the electron towards itself causing unequal sharing and thereby giving rise to polarity now this polarity gives a rise to an interesting phenomenon called hydrogen bonding and what is hydrogen bond a hydrogen bond is the electrostatic attraction that occurs when a hydrogen atom covalently bond to a highly electronegative atom such as nitrogen or oxygen experiences the attraction by another highly electronegative atom in case of water oxygen is the highly electronegative atom so the hydrogen in between these two electronegative oxygen will experience this force this force is responsible for lot of anomalous behavior shown by water this is the reason why water among all liquids has a very high boiling point with this we can conclude our current module In the next module we will take up periodic table see you then